Your thing is I won't do it. And so he said it wasn't robbery to be equal with God. But then he said he makes it very, very plain. His equality with God was for him to do what was necessary in order to bless us in our lives. And see, God, God is not a God who is a selfish God. God is not a God who is about what he can get out of you. See, a whole lot of us, we're about what we can get out of other folks. It, 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 you know, the old saying is, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> you know, when it ain't about what you can get out of it. It ought to be about what you can put into it. See, because Jesus said you always got the pole with you. You're going to always have folk with the hand out, folk begging, folk in need. But you become in the form of God when you can start serving others. When you can start putting into the lives of others. Whether they put back into you or not. See, too often, we ain't going to put nothing into nobody who don't put back into us. Too often, we are just about receiving and never giving. And so that's why he says, look, humility is so important. You got to learn, if you're going to have the mind of God, you got to learn to be humble in life. And I'm going to tell you something. You, let me tell you, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Because when you're on the receiving end, it's because you're on the needy end. But when you're on the giving end, you're on the blessed end. Somebody ought to help me in here today. Verse 7 says, and being made of no reputation. He wasn't looking for no reputation. No reputation. See, a whole lot of us won't do stuff because ain't nobody going to give us no credit for it. Ain't nobody going to pat me on my back. And if I did it one time, you pat me on my back, I ain't doing it no more. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't give me credit. You didn't pat me on my back. I did that. I'm the one. And you didn't say nothing about it. See, I know about that as a pastor. With a church full of volunteer folk. Now let me move on. But he took upon him the form of a servant and and, and, and uh, had no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. See, he came down and, and, and became just like us. He became limited to time and space. See, when he was, when he was, in, when he was God, he was everywhere at the same time. See, God is right here. And he's in California. And not only is he in California, but he's in Michigan. And not only is he in Michigan, but he's in New Jersey. And then he's over in China. Then he jumped down to Africa. God's everywhere at the same time. But when Jesus took on the form of a man, he emptied himself. It's called the kenosis. He emptied himself of his godliness while yet still being fully God he, 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 the attributes that all come together in making God so broad that, that he's everywhere at the same time now Jesus limits himself to the space of a man and, 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 and has the likeness of a man he becomes a servant like man becomes a servant he gets hungry. He gets tired. He gets weary. He feels the same emotions that man feels. We're talking about God now in human flesh. Yeah, yeah. When he became, yeah, Mary's little baby. Yeah, Mary had to feed him. Mary changed his diapers. Mary clothed him. 
Mary washed his clothes, but when he was God, he made Mary. He put the sinews on her tissues and the flesh on her bones and the brain in her mind. Yeah, when he was God, there was nothing that was made that was not made by him. Anybody know what I'm talking about here? I'm talking about Jesus becoming the form of a servant. See, when it really all boils down to it, it ain't about what you can do to get what you need in this world, but it's about what you can do to bless others to get what they need in this world. That's what Jesus did. He came down through the generations of time, saw you in your need, went to an old rugged cross. That's what the text says. Being in verse 8 said, being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Now let me tell you something. If you really want to be successful in life, you take on the mind of Christ. You let the mind of Christ be in you. Because Jesus did all of this. The Bible said God also has highly exalted him. When you learn to be humble under others, put others before yourself, learn to love everybody, learn to treat folk right, Learn to quit trying to, you know, get everything for yourself and learn to share and love with others. Then the Bible says that's when you really are exalted. When you will humble yourself under God's mighty hand, then he will exalt you in due season. The Bible says, even to the death of the cross, Christ humbled himself, but because he humbled himself, he has been given a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue has got to confess that Jesus is the Lord. You want to be exalted in life? You want to be somebody in life? You just learn how to humble yourself and watch what God will do in the midst of your life. It ain't about how you can push yourself and throw your name out there. You just humble yourself, baby, and watch how God will exalt your life. He'll exalt you. He'll exalt you. That's why in verse 9 it says, wherefore God has also highly exalted him and given him a name above every name. Yeah, y'all know what the name is, don't you? Huh? Jesus. Yeah, can anybody say Jesus? Jesus. It's something about Jesus, isn't it? Yeah, it's something about Jesus. When the trials of life come upon you, something about Jesus. When you're going through your troubles, there's something about Jesus. When you don't know what to do, it's something about the name of Jesus that is able to make the difference in your situation. It's something about Jesus that even the devil got to quit being busy. Something about the name Jesus that'll make every knee bow. Something about the name Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sometimes you just got to say Jesus when you don't know what else to do. Like my old grandmama used to say Jesus when she didn't know what else to do. It was Jesus. It wasn't daddy. It wasn't mama. It was Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. That at the name of Jesus... Verse 10, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. See, when you got the mind of Jesus, then, you know, stuff start bowing down for you. Yeah, yeah, doors will be open that were closed in your face. 
when you let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. God will make a way out of no way. He'll, yeah, when you got the mind in you that was also in Christ Jesus, he'll make your enemy become your best friend. And if they don't become your best friend, he'll make them become your footstool when you got the name of Jesus. When you got the mind of Jesus. He said everywhere, something about that name. Everywhere, things in heaven got to bow to the name. The angel got to bow to the name. Everything got to bow, the sun will bow, the moon will bow, the stars will bow. Everything got to bow to the name of Jesus in heaven and on earth. That means everybody gonna one day bow. Every sinner, every liar, every homemonger, every adult got to bow to the name of Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got to bow to the name of Jesus. Well, I'm almost through. I'm through when I tell you this. I'm through when I tell you this. I'm through when I do verse 11. For verse 11 says that if you let the mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, then there's come a day when folk are going to say the right things about you because the day will come when they'll understand who you were in Christ because he says in verse 11, every tongue should confess that Jesus is the Lord. Yeah, the, by the glory of God, to the glory of God. You see, that's the good thing about it. Everybody got to say it. It don't matter what you're saying right now. The day going to come when you're going to say Jesus is the Lord. Amen. To the glory of God. We've already started saying it. How many of you know he's Lord over here? Y'all are ahead of time. I'm coming to y'all. How many of y'all know he's Lord over here? Do you know he's Lord over here? Do you know he's Lord over here? I'm glad he's Lord. What do you mean, pastor, when you say he's Lord? Huh? That means he's my owner. Huh? Yes, he is. Huh? He's my boss. Huh? He's the one in control. Huh? But he's the Lord with a big L. Huh? That don't mean he just owned you in this world. Huh? But it means he made you in this world. Huh? And when you say he's Lord, huh? he's Lord of my money. Huh? He's Lord of my time. Huh? He's Lord of my family. Huh? He's Lord on my job. Huh? He's Lord everywhere I go. Huh? Why? Because he's Lord. Huh? Look at somebody say he's Lord. Huh? Yes, he is. Huh? And if he's Lord, huh? he's able. Huh? Ain't he able? Huh? He's able to do anything with me huh? that he wants to do with me. Huh? I'll go where he wants me to go. Huh? I'll do what he wants me to do. I'll act how he wants me to act. All because he's Lord. Is he Lord now? I've told you what Lord means. Is he Lord to anybody over here? Is he Lord to anybody over here? Over here. Over here. Look at somebody say he's Lord. And I'm confessing it right now. Cause the day gonna come that every knee will confess that Jesus is the Lord. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, if you want to get ahead in life. If you really want God's blessings, let the mind be in you. We're celebrating graduates day to day. I want to say to all the graduates in the second service, let the mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. See, it ain't about your education. Your education ain't going to really get you no job. If Jesus is with you, you can get the same job without an education. 
you're going to be working next to some folk ain't got no education, but yet they got the same job you got. You ought to hear what I'm saying? Yeah, you ought to let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And watch what God will do in the midst of your life. God is able to take that education and he can make you who he wants you to be. Are you, if you don't use that education for the glory of God, then God can just keep you down at the low of the bottom of the toe pole cause there's some folk with a lot of education that can't get nowhere. But I want you to know with Jesus, 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 